Our word for the night is truth. And how about turning some of this down for me? Thank you. The word is truth. We're going to look at it in three ways. An announcement, a confession, and a homily. So hang on. The announcement. I think most of you know that we had a gas leak on the property this earlier this week, which necessitated closing down the school earlier. And of course, the eighth and seventh graders were jubilant. The kindergartners, not so much because they wanted their Christmas party. But anyway, that's going to be taking all next week of working. And also earlier today, the um, sprinkler system here in the church, because of freezing, uh, broke and exploded water and goo uh, on some of these pews back here. So if you're not back there, don't worry about it. So that's our announcement. Confession. One of the things I very much love to do uh, here at St. Margaret is go visit the nursing homes. And one I visit pretty frequently is the lodge. And I have masses there um, every other Tuesday. And the last time I had it was two Tuesdays ago. And we don't have a chapel there, but we have this big room, which is their community room. And it was filled with Christmas things, trees, presents, all these things, and a great big fancy chair that was obvious for Santa to come and sit on. And at the end of the Mass, I said, well, what a wonderful chair. I should have sat on that during the, during the Mass. And one lady said, well, you know, Father, we would love to have you come and be Santa for us sometime. And I said, what a wonderful thing that is. And she said, yes, you don't need padding. <laughs> we all need people like that in our lives, I suppose. And finally, we get to a homily for you. Still thinking of truth. The glory of what we do in celebrating Christmas is to think of three very important truths. First, we were created by God. That God thought enough of who we are that he put himself into the creation of who we are and that he is part of our lives every day. In the book of Genesis, it said that we are made in the image of God, which means that even with our flaws, that God looks at us and sees what is wonderful, what is good, and sees a reflection of himself. And it reminds us, especially at those times when we feel like so much in our life is wrong, or perhaps even that we're a mistake, that something wonderful brought us into being. Second thing we remember in terms of truth tonight is that God is love and that love by its very nature wants to share, share itself with others, share yourself with others. You want to spend time with them. You want to be part of them. And God, from the beginning of time, was sharing himself with his beloved creation, with all of us all through the history of the world with the patriarchs and the prophets, all up teaching us more and more who he is and how much he wants to be part of us. And then final truth tonight. At one point in time, the perfection of truth showed up. The perfection of God's revelation of who he is and the perfection of humanity's openness to that revelation and shows up in a person we call Jesus, a human God together, mystically, only God can do this, bringing Jesus into the world so that in him we can see the face of God and also <laughs> our own faces as we face God in the everyday trials of life. And for us, this is really important. These truths have something to do with every one of us. If we really believe that we were 
created by God. And those of us who are old enough to remember the old catechism, the first question was, who made you? And for those of you my age or older, what was the answer? God made me. Thank you. Sister Mary Lewis insisted on full sentences. God made me. And if we believe that, as we said before, it makes all the difference in the world. We're not here by happenstance. We are here because someone, the perfection of love, God, who is everything, wanted us here now. The second part of the truth, God is love. If we are sharing in that extraordinary reality that God is not just loving us, but God is love, then every time we share love with one another, every time we try to love better, we are connecting with God in a more intimate way. Our lives become more filled with meaning. And then finally, Jesus, the final truth. At one point in the Gospel of St. John, Jesus even says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He reminds us that he is this ultimate truth for all of our lives. Today, we celebrate that great truth of Jesus in our lives, that who he came to this world in such such simple way, such a marvelously a poverty way, if you think about it, Jesus comes to show us that it's not how much you own or how much you and can be in power or who you can control or anything like that. It's how much you love. Tonight, as we thank God for the gift of this feast of Christmas, the gift of one another, as we gather together to pray for and with each other, the gift of this wonderful season, which brings out the best in so many of us. Let us thank God that we can be here at all and that we can realize the truth that is in our life, the truth that God made us, the truth that he loves us, and the truth that he sent us Jesus. This is well worth celebrating.